Less than two years ago, Tim Howard seemed to have it all. At age 45, he just celebrated the birth of his fifth child. He had a good job, a loving wife, but something was wrong. His speech began slurring and he was having trouble holding his newborn. That's when doctors diagnosed him with ALS. He told us that um, he had this Lou Gehrig's disease and we were just devastated, totally devastated. It's hard. By the time he moved in with his sister this year, Tim had lost his mobility, his independence, and perhaps most difficult of all, his wife and children left him. He hasn't seen them in a year. But I miss my kids. This is a crazy sickness. It takes away everything but your mind. It's hard, but crying is good too because you're almost done with that good. sentence. That's good because it, it gets the emotions out. You know, While ALS may have stripped him of everything he once held dear, he holds on to hope and faith. It is a real blessing because I am closer to God. And is grateful that thanks to this eye control technology, he can still share his thoughts and his emotions with his family. So, I mean, this has been a big blessing for you then? Yes. And in some ways, a blessing for his siblings, who feel closer to Tim than ever. I feel privileged to uh, do this for him. I really do. Because I love him. And we, we really do. So as hard as it's been, it's, it's good. There's a lot of good that comes out of bad. You, you just have to find it. And then there's MDA. Without the organization, Tim's sisters say they don't know what they would have done. MDA has just been, I can't say enough good about MDA. I honestly can't. Um, every person I've come across that wants to lend a hand, they go out of their way to help you. If you, they can't help you right now, they'll try to find someone who can. You can email them anytime, you can call them. They, they just make themselves available. People, please give more to these charities so nobody else has to go through this. Because with each donation, we're closer to a cure. Every day, new cures come about in medicine. Every day, something else happens. And it could be his turn tomorrow. Who knows? So, Never give up. Even in your darkest moments. I'm Jennifer Jeffcoat. For years, Sally Churley suffered from varicose veins, like the ones you see here. I mean, it was like a rope on top of my thigh. It's really stood out. I haven't put shorts on in 15 years. Two weeks ago, she underwent a simple outpatient procedure to have the veins removed. One hour after coming in, she was out the door and back to normal the following day. I'm telling you, it's the best thing I've done. The best thing I noticed within three days that my leg did not ache anymore that it was not itch because it would get itchy and sore and it was not itchy and sore and that's weird and I stood there in the shower and I'm like oh the bump you know the big bump down the thigh is gone. Patty Dye has a similar story. Last month she had varicose veins removed from her left leg. Now she's getting ready to have them removed from her other leg. No pain whatsoever. If I'd have known it was this easy I'd have probably come a lot sooner. <laughs> Patty allowed our cameras in to show just how simple it is. Dr. Ral Sudhendra takes us through the procedure. First, the vein is located with an ultrasound. When I press on my ultrasound probe, it winks at you. That means the vein is open. Then local anesthesia is administered at the site where the doctor will make a small puncture. That's where the microwave catheter will be inserted. Little pressure, Pat. You okay? Mm -hmm. Good. The radio frequency energy heats the vein walls and causes them to collapse. This is the deep vein, and where she's moving, that's the catheter. Throughout the procedure, Patty's awake. Once the vein is closed, it becomes scar tissue, and the body naturally absorbs it. Surrounding vessels die off and are also absorbed, so only one vein needs to be treated. How do you feel? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Easy? Oh, yeah. Nothing to it. And nothing out of your wallet. Procedure is usually covered by Medicare and insurance. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Jennifer Jeffcoat for 27 First News. What do you see when you look in the mirror? I see myself. I mean, you know, uh, just Ed. Ed Port is just like you and me, and yet his neurofibromatosis makes him look different. The condition causes these tumors to grow on his face. He first noticed he was different as a young boy, 
when kids at school started calling him names. Fat face or monster or, you know, just a bunch of, you know, hideous, you know, hurtful things. From age 7 to 20, he had about 20 surgeries to try to remove the tumors and the hurt he felt. But the tumors kept coming back. Now, 20 years later, Ed is praying for a miracle. Despite the fact he's losing his hearing and eyesight, insurance companies won't cover the surgeries he needs. And that's one of the, the big reasons why you have the EdNeedsAMiracle.com is because you've been told by a lot of these insurance companies that they won't cover you because they it's cosmetic. They consider it cosmetic. And what it ultimately is coming down to is that some uh, pencil pusher is looking at the bottom line. The bottom line for Ed could mean up to four surgeries to the tune of a million dollars. But that doesn't get Ed down. Little seems to. It's not just all about me. That it's also about getting the word out to help other people in need. Ed would eventually like to turn his website into a foundation to help others with their difficulties. No matter what uh, position we have in life, we can be that maybe that miracle in someone's life that we don't even know. <laughs> and that's perhaps what sticks out most about Ed Port, not his tumors, but the real beauty he possesses inside, and a spirit that won't quit no matter how difficult life seems to be. We have to be positive and look at the glass as half full. And, you know, and also that there's, there's always, uh, you know, hope for tomorrow, you know, hope for a better future. And hope for Ed Port. I'm Jennifer Jeffcoat for 27 First News.